Hello, my name's Angelo Darren. I'm with Freedom Mobile Living, and uh, thanks for watching. Today, I want to kind of give you a recap of what happened. We purchased a hot dog cart, and then we got our license, and we got the health license, and then we did our first event. So I want to kind of do a recap on our first event, and then I want to kind of go into detail about some of the income I produce from various different apps and income streams that I have. And this is something that everybody can do. The trouble with most people is they don't manage their apps or they don't manage the income stream for profitability and therefore they feel like they're spending a lot more hours out there trying to create income than really what uh, the type of money that they're making. So stay tuned because I want to get in de detail as far as actually how I do that and uh, what type of money you could probably make. Uh Come on down to the Allegan because we're out here with the Welton Famous Dogs and the Lemon Shake-Ups. It's really unbelievable. I mean, people are just raving about it and they're going crazy about it. They've never tasted a hot dog so fresh, so full of quality. Come on down to Welton Famous Dogs. I tell you what, they tell us you saw us on Facebook and when you come down here, we'll give you a free hot dog. How is that? Welton Famous Dogs was inspired by the late Michael Welton. Everything's been going real good. We're starting to solidify a lot of events and company outings and parties anywhere from 50 to 100. Well, I think our largest one is 250. Really a lot more than we've ever anticipated. Uh, we do have plans of going down to Yuma. We have solidified some events down there starting in October. And then we plan on returning back to the Michigan area in April of uh, 2020. What I'm looking for in my life is to have whatever time or gaps of time I have, whether that's regular work hours or whether that's outside of work hours, if I have idle time, I will do something in order to create income. And sometimes I enjoy what I do as far as like the ride share with dealing with people because I like talking to people. It doesn't always work out that way because most of my rides, uh, there's not a lot of conversation going on. Just remember, if you are driving right now, for I don't care who you're driving for, the best thing you can do is speak less. So if you feel like speaking, hold your tongue, because most of the people that take rides, all they care about is going from one place to another. The time that I get the big conversations going is somebody that likes to have conversation or somebody I have... Uh, driven more than a few times because if you drive in and ride local you drive the same rider you end up developing a relationship so then a conversation is started and obviously i'm going to tell them exactly more of the things we do and i can help them out in their lives because as a rider i want to be their personal driver but i want to maximize my the amount of money i make uh for what i'm doing Thank you for watching my video. If it interests you to reduce some debt, maybe you're struggling right now with excessive amount of debt and you want to figure out how I can reduce that. Or maybe maybe you just want to make some income, additional income, and you like that idea. Maybe you like the idea of remote income where you can make income where you want and when you want pretty much on your turn. I just wanted to kind of show you what I have in the back here. Um, I've kind of set it up where this is how I have it during the day when I turn it into uh, taking passengers. All the way in the back of the vehicle, I, I went ahead and I just stacked things. I try to get as organized as I can with it and then I cover it. Because there are times I pick up hotel rides and I got to put luggage on top of here. 
but it gives me enough room. Sometimes it becomes a tight squeeze, but I manage to do what I can. Now everybody probably wonders, what well, you know, how did you get into the dog business? Well, it had to do with uh, somebody I took as a rider in the ride local platform back down in Yuma. I got to know him over seven months. He was really passionate about hot dogs. Uh, I've always kind of had a thing for hot dogs as well, just growing up uh, with them. And uh, one thing led to another and inspired us to uh, add it to our fruit cart that we have down in the winter. And we uh, first trial was last year in the winter. We tried the fruit cart and we vended it on the street. We did very well. We only did it three days a week. But uh, with everything transpired with Mike passing and uh, with the hot dogs itself, we decided to go ahead and add it as part of our platform. Uh, kind of crazy thing is uh, being in business, I always know anytime you do anything, if you can increase the amount of ticket item, then you're going to increase the amount of sales. Does that make sense? And then my profitability is going to be more. So if we can do more things within a small area and increase our sales by doing it, uh, our profitability is going to be astounding. So what we decided to do is since we have the citrus, why not add uh, lemon shake-ups, which is this fresh squeezed lemons. Uh, since we have availability of lemons, we're gonna be selling them in groups of threes and, and dozens. We also will use them in our vending as far as uh, lemon shake-ups. So we're gonna have the hot dogs, and we're gonna uh, carry a regular dog. We're also gonna have a regular beef dog, which is like eight to ones. And then we'll also have a quarter pound beef dog, Polish sausage, and also a smoked sausage. Uh, when we first did the first event, it was almost like uh, it was a learning curve to it. So it got me uh, used to having people come up and ha passing out dogs and how I was going to dress them, how I was going to package them in order to give them to a customer. Because there's different ways that we can do that. We can use foil sheets, we could use sandwich sheets, we can just use boats. So we decided on uh, going with the foil sheets because they're more economical and the people could save them if they wanted to. They could wrap them up and hold them for later if they wanted to eat them later. Uh, as far as dressing, we base that on the event. So if the event's, uh, let's say, 250 people, obviously it's easier to have the customers put their own, uh, their own condiments on. If it's a smaller crowd, anywhere from 50 to 150, we'll go ahead and dress the dogs for them. Uh, we do sell a lot of combo meals, and we have included the dog with it, and then uh, potato chips and a drink. But now, one of our customers have asked us to include some sweet items, so we do have uh, chocolate chip cookies now that we're going to add to part of the combo meal. So, as we do this, we're finding out that most of our business, we thought it would be just street vending, getting a spot, taking a spot out somewhere, and then vend it. We thought that would be a big business, and it is in itself, but then never considered the catering and the delivery aspect of the business as well. Uh, we started opening up the catering a little bit, and we're starting to solidify events like large events, some for 250, some for 120, but events for parties, graduations, uh, sometimes people will do a uh, reception, you know, for the reception, for the rehearsal dinners, or just, uh, just to get, uh, gather for a picnic for a company. A lot of times companies in the summer are doing outside events where they can go ahead and have our cart on site and we can go ahead and serve their guest uh, right off the cart itself. So from the hot state to the serving state. Another thing that I had decided to do, now the hot dog business as far as being lucrative, the first event we did, we did uh, a, week, a little bit over $400. It was a new event, first day they ever had the event, and I thought doing $400 was a decent day. Uh, it was uh, a learning curve for us. We learned a lot on how we're going to serve it, how we're going to present it, as well as our pricing and our meals. Uh, so going forward, uh, we're starting to improve ourselves as, uh, our, I guess, a restaurant tier for street vending hot dogs. Uh, we've been real well received. People really like the shakeups with the lemon in addition to the dog. Uh, it's been going over really well. We've had a lot of taste tests because obviously uh, we want to make our dog so distinctive that people can't get it anywhere else and they only come to us for that. Now people say, that's fine and dandy, but now everybody's doing a hot dog cart. 
my purpose of a hot dog cart was something that transpired. I'm always looking for an opportunity to, for, to make some income. Now, whether that's part-time, whether that's full-time, however it is, I'm always looking for other opportunities out there just so I can see uh, what I can add to my platform and then make me more profitable or make more income on a weekly basis. So the hot dog cart seems like it's gonna be a lucrative one. We do have the Green Code 2, which is a carpet and air duct cleaning. I have tried to sell the business, but uh, I don't want to just sell it to anybody, and I don't want to sell it just for any type of offer. So we've uh, refused a few offers and decided right now at this particular point, we're going to keep it, and then we're going to service the people in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and we'll service the people in Yuma. Now, we might be more picky or particular on how many jobs we do in a week's time because this is income stream for us. But one of the problems uh, that we're facing as we start getting older is that when I do a, a major job, like Friday we did a job and it was almost $2,000, but I did that major job. When I went out and did that, I was down for the count. The next day I was so darn blasted sore. A lot has to do with my age. Uh, and uh, it's starting to catch up with me. And so I got to start thinking about that going forward. So right now we have the Green Code 2. And uh, we make a substantial amount of income off that every week. And then I add to, uh, I've been doing rides. Because we have opened up the platform of Ride Local in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And I've had and recruited somebody, uh, Jonathan Hitt, to kind of spearhead the Ride Local platform. And that way I don't have to necessarily be here in order to do it. I have so many things to do, I don't have time to devote 100% of my time into that platform. So uh, it is a business platform for people to grow their own type of business if they want to do it in the ride share market or in the delivery market. So I have somebody spearheading it in Grand Rapids. When I leave here in August, uh, no, September 25th, uh, obviously it's going to be, the platform's going to be active here. And uh, I'm going to go back down to the platform in Yuma for Ride Local and uh, solidify that a little bit more and maybe build that a little bit more. So here's what I have is, uh, let's break it down a little bit. I have uh, the Welton Famous Dogs. And that has made me, the first event we did was, like I said, a little bit over $400. We do have some events that are set up. We're not doing a lot in Grand Rapids, Michigan, because we're getting our trans transition to going down to Yuma. And before we do that, we have already solidified spots down there. So our weekly uh, days that we are gonna van down there is already gonna be solidified before we even get there. So as soon as we get there, we can go up and running and start making some money the first week that we're there. So we have the dogs, and now we have the Green Code 2 down there as well. We've had a lot of people request for air ducts and dryer vent cleaning as well as carpet cleaning down in Yuma. So we're gonna bring it down there again this year and uh, uh, serve some of the customers that we have down there. We're not looking to do a full-time business out of any of them. So we're looking to kind of just make money. So it's all about making money and making income for the week. The other thing is the Ride Local because the platform in Grand Rapids is uh, Ride Local makes this money off its booking fees. And the booking fees are given to, uh, there's three owners in the company. Booking fees is shared, but we also use it for app development for the future. So when we go future with Ride Local, we want to see what the customers want, what's good for the market, and, and what is really needed, and kind of go in that direction. The other thing that uh, we have down is the fruit business, and that's really have grown quite a bit. We have uh, over 900 followers in that area that have bought from us last winter, and this year we anticipate it to be three times that. So that should be a big business for us as well. Uh, the other thing that I do is deliveries. Uh, I haven't done a lot of deliveries. I have done some catering, and that adds to my income for the week as well. But in catering, I, I'll make $100, $200 extra. But in, uh, I just got to prove a point, as I have been driving pretty extensively for lifting Grand Rapids, uh, I put in like 34 hours one week, I think 20 another, but I have some figures I want to show you. And I made over $1,000 on this given week, and uh, then the next week uh, I went did a little bit less and I made $924. But that'll give you an idea. I mean, then you add that to everything else I'm making, it's very easy to make a very lucrative income on the road. Uh, it's just you have to look at for opportunities, fit it into your lifestyle, 
and see exactly how you'd like to do that. It's almost like when we were going to open up Ride Local again, I had to make a decision. Did I want to spearhead that or did I want to get other people to do it? Uh, because if I do it, it's going to take a lot of my time and I don't have time and I have to divide it amongst all the businesses and all the platforms that I have in order to make thing, make sure everything's stable and uh, secured and we're doing just with our customers, including the riders, the people that uh, uh, call up Green Code 2 for the air ducts, because I have a passion to provide good service for everybody and the value. So you can rest assured that anything, if you ever visit any of them, whether it be the Welton Famous Dogs, or if you ever do any work with Green Coat 2, the air ducts or the carpets, or their dryer vent cleaning, or if you just want to take a ride, everything you're going to get is 100% satisfaction, but it's another one thing is where everything is, is built and concentrated on customer service. So your experience or the customer's experience as we go through those, that's really what our business is built on. So now you're wondering, okay, how can I do that? I mean, that sounds dandy. You have businesses going, you have things going, but it's easy for you. Everybody looks at me and they think it's easy. It's not. You don't look at the behind the scenes, the amount of hours I put, the amount of time I put into, the uh, amount of people that I have an extension of me because I can only do so much. So I even have, uh, because my background is some coding, I also have IT people that I work with. So I'm constantly working with our IT department, dealing with our Ride Local app and stuff. And I'm also working with uh, everybody else within the companies and the people within the companies that not only maintain its structure, but also uh, will help it build into the future. So if it's something that you're looking into, the first thing I would suggest is to do something that's already out there. Now, right now, the rideshare game is very lucrative because Lyft and uh, uh, Uber are paying uh, bonuses to get the drivers out there. They don't have enough drivers on the field, so they're they're giving you bonus money, and they call it either they can call it uh, a streak or they can call it a hot spot. However they call it, they're throwing money at the drivers to get them on the road. And I've noticed even now, because this is, the, I think they've done it like three or four weeks, and so the lucrative money is there. The bonuses, you're looking at two, $300 a week, you, you can earn an additional bonuses. The negative side of it is once the drivers are out on the road and Lyft sees that in the algorithm, they're gonna start pulling off the bonuses because the drivers will still stay there and they're gonna try to operate without bonuses. So the, the driver's amount of money they're making is gonna start dwindling. That's why it's so important if you are driving or if you have any indication to drive, look into Ride Local as an additional platform because you can use it to touch people. A lot of time people will do it. Uh, I will be in, put myself in a position so I can get a rider and then I, that rider becomes my rider and then over time I can get uh, maybe more rides from them or maybe a delivery from, for them. Uh, but I try to increase the amount of money I get for each client I have because on the ride local platform There's no way you can drive like you can with Uber or Lyft. I mean Uber or Lyft You're gonna done do three times amount of rides the difference is you're gonna make three times less money So that's why ride local is so uh, is Such a good platform and to be honest with you me and my partner when we put it together We threw the money into it to invest and we thought, hey, and we did decide one day, hey, what if no driver comes and the platform really doesn't get off that way? And we said, well, at least we can have, at least we can go out there and make money and make some remote income based on it. And we have done that. So throughout the pandemic, obviously drivers are afraid to drive and so on and all the problems that you have. I've literally been on the ground driving Obviously, I'm cautious. I'm always wearing a mask, and I'm always sure my my customers are wearing masks. And I'm cautious. I got the windows down, and so on. So I'm looking for ways to make a safe environment. But in the same token, I'm looking at the industry to see what's happening. And I'm seeing a lot of the things shifting into the future, where it would have went there anyhow. The only difference, the pandemic, kind of spearheaded to go into the future a lot quicker. So if you're looking, if you're really looking to make income, and I'm, let's say you're working in a job and you're sick and tired, you're making that same old money and there's not enough month or money to go for the end of the month. I mean, and you're always short. You're always going from one week to another or borrowing 
from Bill to pay Paul. If you're doing that, there's a better way of life. One thing I've learned in doing this lifestyle has caused me to learn is that life is only worth living if you can minimize anxiety and you can make yourself feel like you're free every day. Now, freedom means that I can go, choose to go where I want, when I want, not based on any constraints of what the world has decided to give out to everybody. So the world's told us how to live, and a lot of us have lived that way part of our lives, like for me. It took me until I was 50 years old before I decided that, hey, they, said, they sold me a, a song and dance and a bunch of lies, and I bought into that. I was into that rat race. Uh, major health things caused me to stop in that rat race. And then I took a look at my life, and I said, why, if I died tomorrow, would I, could I, could I, physically say I was very happy and I lived my life to the fullest the day before and I would have to say no I had a business and everything but what's big deal is that they can put what on my tombstone they can say he was a businessman that was really not enough to give me passion of life and I got to a point where I felt my sticks and bricks was a prison that I was encapsulated in it really was and as I've been doing this life since August 2020, I look around even in the houses that I see, in the cities I go into, or in some cases even in the boondocking areas. And for some of you that don't know what boondocking is, that's when uh, nomads or people decide to go out in the wilderness with a camper or a van or a car, in my situation, on uh, an SUV. But they go out there for the simple case. They want to have the freedom. But see, freedom isn't to go out there. That's not freedom. Because you still have everything else you can tend to of life that uh, the world has given you. So your life is handed down where you still have a lot of things. You've got a, a successful amount of bills. You have dwellings you got to be responsible for. You have a lot of responsibility. And you don't know sometimes where you're going to get the money in order to, to handle it all. Uh, it's amazing about life. Things end up working out. But you don't have to go through life like I did. I mean, I got to a point where I'd be depressed, and then I, I'm the type of guy that's going to snap on it. I'm not going to stay in depression, so I snapped on it, and I'm saying, what's going on? You know what I mean? I have to, I'm making the money. I got a good job. I got a good home. I got family. I got kids. I have everything. Why aren't I feel fulfilled? Why don't I have a passion when I wake up every morning? And so I was getting to a point where every time I was waking up, I was like dreading, oh, my God, I got to do this again. Well, when I started the nomad living, it literally opened up a whole can of worms because I had to relive or rethink about the way I do my daily work. Uh, not only in the business, but also how I had to do my daily life. So getting up in the morning, I do the same thing as everybody else. The only difference is this isn't my home. This SUV that you see right here isn't my home. This is my means to make income, and this is my mobile bedroom that I sleep in. That's it. All I want to do is I want to spend my time right out here in the world because that's my home. Wherever the world is, is when I choose to go, that's where my home is. Not in some vehicle, not in an RV, not in a trailer, not in the sticks and bricks. Because I don't really think there's any difference in someone being in the sticks and bricks and staying inside all the time watching TV than there is somebody who goes out into boondocking and doesn't, can't get out into the heat, or can't get out into the weather, right? Because they stay inside their dwelling, whether that be a trailer, a travel trailer, RV, or camper, or whatever it is, they stay in there, and they don't enjoy what God has given you out here. I'm not saying that's everybody. I'm not trying to cast stones at any particular person. But I see a lot. I go, I go a lot. And every time I travel, I see people that are in their dwellings, whether that be a sticks and bricks or their camper or RV. It's sad because really they're not experiencing life. I mean, my dad, he, he kind of waited into his dwelling until at the end of his life waiting to die. It was like he almost gave up. So you know, every day you went to visit him, he was uh, in his pajamas. He was in the living room. He was just waiting to die. I didn't want to do that. To be honest with you, if I had, I, I've, had, I've had a prayer of this, and I've asked God, if I can die, I would rather just roll into a mountain in the car, my SUV, and then sit in that front seat, 
And if I had uh, if I had the strength to open up my hatch and come back here and sit and enjoy the view that I have on the way out, that's how I want to go. We can't change the day that the day is. We can change how it happens. Though. We can change where we're at when it happens. And that's exactly what I have done. So if anybody is interested in changing your life, if you're interested in, in you know making some remote income and you want me to show you how, you want me to give you some pointers on how to get to one stage or one step to the next, I can do that for you. Subscribe below and hit that notification bell because as soon as I come out with a new video dealing with making income or living in an SUV on the road as a mobile bedroom or reducing your overhead debt, if you just stick with me and follow my videos, you're going to learn a lot and hopefully, hopefully, your life can change. And with that, I will see you at the top. But if you like what you see in this video, and you're looking to not only reduce your debt, but you're also looking to increase income. I ask that you subscribe below and hit the notification bell, and that way I'll notify you every time a video comes out. Mm -hmm.